Today on Nerd of the Rings, we're going to talk about Aragorn's travels and deeds after the destruction of the One Ring. After the ring is destroyed and Sauron defeated, a victorious Aragorn makes his way from their victory camp at the Field of Cormallan to Minas Tirith, arriving on May 1st, 3019. There, at the gate of the city, Faramir meets Aragorn, requesting permission to surrender his office of steward, as the rightful king has returned. Rather than accept his resignation, Aragorn declares that the office is not ended, and it shall be Faramir's and his heirs as long as Aragorn's line lasts. As steward of the city, Faramir stands and asks the people if Aragorn shall become king, and the crowd declares in one voice, yea. There, at the gate of the city, Aragorn becomes King Elisar, winning the hearts of the people of Gondor. King Elisar also gives Faramir the title Lord of Emin Arnon and makes him Prince of Ithilien. On June 25th, Gandalf would take Aragorn up the slopes of Mindoluin. There, Aragorn would find a sapling of the line of Nimloth. Aragorn plants the new tree in the court by the fountain, replacing the former white tree that was in its place. Elrond and Arwen come to Gondor around June 30th, 3019. Elrond gives Elisar the scepter of Anuminas, signifying the kingship of Arnor. The scepter had survived the downfall of Numenor and had been held by the kings of Arnor while the realm lasted. Aragorn and Arwen are married on Midsummer's Day, 3019. They would go on to have one son and several daughters. On July 22nd, Aragorn sets out with the remaining members of the Fellowship, along with many others, as part of the funeral escort of King Theoden. On the way, they stop at the Grey Wood under Amondin. There, King Elisar declares that the forest of Druiden belongs to Gan Burigan and his people, and that no man may enter it without their leave. On August 10th, a funeral is held, where they say their final goodbyes to King Theoden. Soon after, the group departs for Isengard. At Isengard, Aragorn is given the keys of Orthanc by Treebeard. Aragorn in turn declares Isengard to be an Entish realm. Here, he departs the company and makes his way back to Minas Tirith. We know a fair amount of Elisar's first tasks in reordering his realm. He orders the restoration of the Tower of Orthanc and has the Orthanc Palantir returned there. With this task being set forth, many secrets and hoarded treasures are found within the tower, including the Elendilmir, the Star of Elendil. This jewel dates back to the early centuries of Numenor, and had been worn by Isildur when he was killed in the Anduin. Saruman had gained the Elendilmir during his search for the One Ring. Aragorn also re-establishes the Great Council of Gondor, whose purpose was to counsel the king, with his steward Faramir being his chief counselor. With Eomer, he renews the Oath of Kirion. Eomer, in turn, renews the Oath of Eorl the two realms pledging their unending alliance with one another. In these early years of Aragorn's reign, it is said that often Eomer fulfilled the oath. While the Southrons in the western lands of Harad came to make peace and submit to the rule of King Elisar, the east had much stronger ties to Sauron. After all, this is where Sauron dwelt during the 400-year watchful peace between his times in Dol Guldur. While Aragorn had pardoned all the Easterlings that had given themselves up and sent them away free, there were still many others hostile to Gondor. Tolkien states, For though Sauron had passed, the hatreds and evils that he bred had not died, and the King of the West had many enemies to subdue before the White Tree could grow in peace. And wherever King Elisar went with war, King Eomer went with him. And beyond the Sea of Rune, the thunder of the Cavalry of the Mark was heard and the white horse upon green flew in many winds until Eomer grew old. Together, these kings of the west made safe their kingdoms for generations to come. Another notable journey during Elisar's reign comes in 15 of the Fourth Age, 17 years into his reign, when Aragorn and Arwen visit the hobbits outside the Shire. Arwen makes Eleanor Gardner, the daughter of Samwise Gamgee, a maid of honor. In regards to the Shire, Aragorn declares it a free land under the protection of the Northern Scepter and forbids men from entering it. He appoints the offices of Thane of the Shire and the Mayor of Mikkel Delving to be counselors of the North Kingdom. By this time, the position of Thane is held by Peregrine Tuke and the Mayor of Mikkel Delving is Samwise Gamgee. 
Elisar also gifts to the Shire the lands up to Emin Bered. It is also noted that Legolas brings a group of elves out of the Greenwood in the year 20 of the Fourth Age to dwell in Athelion, which once again becomes the fairest country in all the Westlands. This group of elves would live in Athelion for the next hundred years. As king, Elisar founds the royal house of Telcontar, and by house we're referring to the name of his family. The name Telcontar has a deeper meaning than just being an elvish word. You see, when Aragorn enters the city of Minas Tirith in Return of the King, Pippin continues to call him by his ranger nickname, Strider. This was considered crude, especially in front of foreign dignitaries such as King Eomer of Rohan. Aragorn, however, is amused by this and comes to decide that the name of his lineage would be Telcontar, the elvish word for Strider. Speaking of Pippin, inspiring this name would not be his last deed in relation to his role as a guard of the Citadel. Sometime after becoming king, Aragorn requests a copy of the Red Book of Westmarch, the book in which Bilbo and Frodo recorded their adventures. This copy is known as the Thane's Book. In the spring of the year 63 of the Fourth Age, Pippin lays down his role of Thane, which passes to his son, Faramir Tuk. In that same year, Mariadoc Brandybuck receives word that King Eomer wishes to see him. The two friends travel to Rohan, where they spend time with Eomer. That fall, the king dies. After Eomer's death, Merry and Pippin travel to Minas Tirith, delivering the Thane's book to Elisar. Merry and Pippin, now 102 and 94 years old respectively, would die a few years later. They are laid to rest in Rathdinen, the burial place of the kings and stewards of Gondor. King Elisar would go on to rule for over 50 more years. Yet at last, he felt the approach of old age and knew that the span of his life days was drawing to an end, though long it had been. Then Aragorn said to Arwen, At last, Lady Evenstar, fairest in the world, and most beloved, my world is fading. Lo, we have gathered, and we have spent, and now the time of payment draws near. Arwen knew well what he intended, and long had foreseen it. Nonetheless, she was overborne by her grief. Would you then, Lord? Before your time leave your people that live by your word, she said. Not before my time, he answered. For if I will not go now, then I must soon go perforce. And Aldarion, our son, is a man full ripe for kingship. Then going to the house of the kings in the silent street, Aragorn laid him down on the long bed that had been prepared for him. There he said farewell to Eldarion and gave into his hands the winged crown of Gondor and the scepter of Arnor. And then all left him save Arwen, and she stood alone by his bed. And for all her wisdom and lineage, she could not forbear to plead with him to stay yet for a while. She was not yet weary of her days, and thus she tasted the bitterness of the mortality that she had taken upon her. Lady Undomiel, the hour is indeed hard. Yet it was made even in that day when we met under the white birches in the garden of Elrond where none now walk. And on the hill of Karen Emroth, where we forsook both the shadow and the twilight, this doom we accepted. Take counsel with yourself, beloved, and ask whether you would indeed have me wait until I wither and fall from my high seat, unmanned and witless. Nay, lady, I am the last of the Numenorians, and the latest king of the Elder Days and to me has been given not only a span thrice that of men of Middle-earth, but also the grace to go at my will and give back the gift. Now, therefore, I will sleep. I speak no comfort to you, for there is no comfort for such pain within the circles of the world. The uttermost choice is before you, to repent and go to the havens and bear away into the west the memory of our days together that shall there be ever green but never more than a memory, or else to abide the doom of men. Nay, dear lord, she said, that choice is long over. There is now no ship that would bear me hence, and I must indeed abide the doom of men, whether I will or I nil, the loss and the silence. But I say to you, king of Numenorians, not till now have I understood the tale of your people and their fall, as wicked fools I scorn them, 
but I pity them at last. For if this is indeed, as the Eldar say, the gift of the one to men, it is bitter to receive. So it seems, he said, but let us not be overthrown at the final test. Who of old renounced the shadow and the ring? In sorrow we must go, but not in despair. Behold, we are not bound forever to the circles of the world, and beyond them is more than memory. Farewell. Estelle, Estelle, she cried. And with that, even as he took her hand and kissed it, he fell into sleep. King Elisar dies on March 1st in the year 120 of the Fourth Age, at the age of 210, having ruled the reunited kingdom for 122 years. Merry and Pippin are laid beside Aragorn in their final resting place. Aragorn and Arwen's son Eldarion would succeed Elisar as the second king of the reunited kingdom. It was foretold that Aragorn's son would rule a great realm and that it should endure for a hundred generations of men after him. Arwen bids farewell to her son and daughters and travels to Lothlorien. There she stays for a time before giving up her life a few months later at Cairn Emroth, where her grave lies. This is the very hill where Aragorn and Arwen were betrothed, binding themselves to each other and their mortal life together. As always, I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon and YouTube who make this channel possible. In particular, I want to give a special shout out to my wizard level supporters, Tom de Bombadil 19 and Sky Carcass. If you want to find out how you can score some exclusive perks and help the channel, go to patreon.com slash nerd of the rings. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.